you know, sometimes, um, I've said it many times, that it's, um, I like this team a lot. And I use the word team um, in all caps. Uh, today was an unbelievable team victory. And um, it was not easy. Iowa was playing great. They're uh, just one of Michigan State. Uh, Fran, in my opinion, is as good an offensive coach as there is in the country. Uh, just developing guys, getting them to play at a high level. Um, I actually felt, other than the last play of the half, the last sequence of the half, I actually felt pretty good at half because I thought we'd force Dix and, and, and some of those guys into some pretty hard shots that they made. And, uh, but uh, um, could not be prouder of Coleman. Um, growth, maturity, um, great bounce back uh, from the other night. Uh, obviously, uh, a night where Marcus and, and, and Terrence didn't have their best, and yet we found a way. I thought Dane, I thought Amadi, um, did, did, did great jobs. Um, they had a rebounds, um, you know, missed a couple bunnies, but, uh, uh, and then I thought Imani's uh, presence was, was very, very impactful. Um, Nico had made a basket in a month, uh, but you can tell he's a coach's kid. You can tell he's a team guy. He's never gotten wrapped up into any of that, he's never come and ask. He's never come and ask me what do I have to do to play. He just shows up every single day and does his job. Gets an extra lift with Fletch every day, um, and it's amazing how good things happen. To people who work hard, and, and uh, um, you know. And then I was, I was, I've been pretty upset with Justin um, after the game at uh, Penn State. Uh, you know, he gave up five back cuts and. Uh, um, just mistakes. They're just mistakes, and especially when you spend a ton of time on them, um, and you can't go make mistakes. And, and I let him set a long time in the first half, and you know, uh, and, and and yet he he responded. Maybe you know that bench is a pretty good motivator sometimes. But uh, um, our bench won us the game. Uh, our defense, I thought, in the second half was outstanding. Uh, 35 percent, 16 percent from three. They made one, and um, uh, you know we had enough. And uh, it's, that's that's hard to do sometimes because you have to score against Iowa because you know they're going to make some, some some tough shots. So um, great team win today. Brent, defensively, obviously they they only get 19 shots at the rim. Um, instead of you know some of the other games we've seen 25, 30 shots in the rim, one point, some point. Pain. It forced. Was this what you envisioned when you forced tough twos here? Yeah. Our whole, you know, it's no, it's not rocket science what we do. It's tough twos and and um, it, and then it's uh, limit them to one shot. I thought we did a much better job, especially in the second half. Nico gets a lot of credit, just guarding ball. And, and keep it in front of us. And uh, uh, I think we, we've, we've, somebody told me we gave up the fewest layups that we have since since the Rutgers game, maybe, uh, the first one. Uh, so um, again, my hat's off to, to, to Nico, our guys guarding the ball better. Uh, and, and again, we can't have mistakes. I've been, that's all I've been harping on. You can't make mistakes. You can't make scouting report mistakes. You've you got to be able to take away what the other team does. And uh, that's obviously a benefactor, benefactor of that. Brad, similar situation in the Penn State game. Uh, back here. Uh, up 10 with two minutes left. Did you sense a different attitude with the guys this time? Like they learned what not to do to you know avoid that collapse? Not at all. I think it was the same way. I, it, it, you guys got to understand, we didn't talk for one second about the Penn State game. We didn't show one clip. We didn't even grade it out. And that's, that's there's a difference between having freshmen and younger teams who, who know 
Uh, Darren Shannon knew he shouldn't have dribbled. He had three guys over. Um, Coleman knew he shouldn't have fouled. Um, you know, he missed two free throws. We took a quick shot. They all knew. And we talk about situations repeatedly. So it was just, it was more about the mental approach and, and our ability to guard. So I didn't worry about, I didn't worry about that for five seconds. We, we did it the game before Maryland, you know, we put it away. So that's just a, a fluke. It happens and um, we just flushed it, so to speak. Coach, was it, was it the game plan to come in, come into this game to, to use, or to go that deep into the bench? And, not really. Uh, that's what I thought. And, uh, what, really, what was kind of behind the, the line change there a couple minutes into the second half? I was just thrilled with the way the first group played. I was so excited about, you know, us not getting on the floor and, and uh, giving up rebounds. And, and uh, I, 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 I had seen enough with that group. And, and, um, um, their butt needed to find the bench, and and they needed to they needed to understand um, it's not acceptable, and and playing time is not is not a given thing, just because you average this or you've been out there, and um, I've said it, we've got a really good team, and I couldn't be prouder that it, it worked today, <laughs> but. Um, I've made a lot of line changes over the years in, in different in different ways, and but I also had a lot of confidence in in, in what what that group can do because I see them every day. Brad, I understand the motivational aspect of the line change from that standpoint, but specifically to Nico, what did you see from him that also gave you the confidence to have him close the game out like he did? He's one. He's really fast. Um, you, know, you know, my concerns with Nico are never on the offensive end. They've always been about defensive work. But I, I kept him in because of what he was doing on the defensive side. We got over the top of every ball screen. He didn't foul. I mean, he, 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 we all know he, you know, he might weigh a buck seventy soaking wet, and yet he's in there fighting and competing. And uh, they tried to post him two or three times. He, he committed a foul. I didn't think it was a foul. But, um, but then, you know, he's got the ability to break the defense down. Uh, he gives us a different look. Uh, and again, at a night when TJ and, and, and Mark were great, um, man, it created some, some, some opportunities and, and uh, to drive the ball and play ball screens. And he was, he, was, he was great. And he wasn't afraid to take a couple threes when he was wide open. Brad, you said this was growth and maturity for Coleman. Obviously, he's doing that throughout his career. But what did it look like the last couple of days? And what did, what did he show you? What did he tell you? Didn't say much specifically. Got off social media, he said. Anybody want to check that? <laughs> um, yeah, um, all those conversations stay really private, but we had a really, we had a real, a, a get real conversation. And, and I, I'm really happy with him. I love his response a year or two ago. I'm not sure that that would have been the response. Uh, I think it was beneficial. We had a pretty quick turnaround in a game, um, but he practiced great, and it's just the correlation that happens with when the when the mind is right and the mental approach is right. Uh, it was not at Penn State, quite simply not, and he knows that. But uh, uh, he also has to understand the impact that it has on everybody at this university, every fan, every teammate. And um, it's it's bigger than just him. And so he, I, I, I couldn't be happier. I thought Coleman was was just fantastic today. So Brad, uh, Coleman had a really good uh, effort play there that led to a steal. And I saw you gave him a half uh, What do those type of plays just mean for the team? Well, as a veteran and as a leader, that that's really contagious. And we played this same Iowa team, and it took Demonte Williams diving on the floor for a loose ball to win a championship. And that's how you win. And and my my point of frustration is it's it's not it's not just a Big Ten game. It's 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 the abruptness of the end that happens if you don't make that play in the NCAA tournament. And we can't pick and choose when we do those moments. And he was picking and choosing. And, and, and the game, the game will never treat you right if you do that. So, growth. I, I hope it's it's continues to to be very contagious. Diving on loose balls and and 
and kind of challenging the rim. And I thought Amani did the same thing. I thought we had multiple guys on the floor today. So um, those are all the hustle plays that let you advance in March. Brad, I know you've always been a big fan of Amani's game. What's led to where he can give you this kind of shot in the arm? Practice. I, you know, I, I've said this many times. I think Amani would be playing 20 plus minutes a game if, if it was not for his injury. Extremely high IQ. You know, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. He's nasty. He's just got a nasty, competitive, gritty, fiery. He is the greatest trash talker we've had here since IO. Um, he fights you. He is he is just that kid. That's who he is. And it's every day and it's every play. And and we missed that when, we, when he was out. But um, you put that along the way that he's, he's a really, really smart player. And um, uh, he'd be helping us. Even if maybe the plan wasn't to play the number of guys you did, the number of minutes that they got, I mean, does that make you sort of reevaluate how you've used your bench, maybe in your rotation? I, you know, I, I don't go in with a plan. I go in to win. And and sometimes, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, we, 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 we've had a unique season. In fact, we haven't been really healthy and, and whole and, 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 you know, we've had some, some, some other issues. So uh, we had to do what we had to do to survive, to win. And, uh, you know, it's 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 nice to kind of be getting back there a little bit. Um, I was very I'm so happy with Dane and, and Amani today. But again, it's just uh, it gives me comfort to see them do it. Um, I'm not saying it was planned, but it, it's nice to know that, that, that it worked out right. Red five straight 21 seasons. First time since Lou Henson. What's that mean to you? Well, I think it's really hard to do in this league. Um, I, don't, I don't ever want to. I don't want anybody to t ever take that for granted. Um, great coaches, great players, great administration. You look at what we've done with this building, the State Farm Center. You look at what we've done with Oven. Um, uh, you know, it, it's it's um, speaks volumes to a lot of people, not just. You know, one individual, but we we've had really good players, and 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 I I, I love consistency. I've, I've never been here to try to have a great team. I've been here to try to have a great program, and 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 to try to withstand that through through the course of the time. And what is the best league in the country, and 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 the best fans. So, but on the other hand, I think it kind of should kind of be the norm here. I think this is a really, really good job, and 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 you can win national championships here. I've said that many times, and you know, throw the piano on my back. I'm I'm good. I can handle that. But that's the ex that should be that's our expectation here. So, um, my opinion is, go get five more. If I stop, I I just I think it's it's within the realm. And but but uh, and I think today Derek told me was the the one thousandth win. In Big Ten play, our program, and I think that's only one other school. Is that right? One other school to, to accomplish that. Uh, wow, that speaks to everything I talk about. How great this program is, and and we have to look at it that way. If we're not, then then damn it, leave. I mean, we have to think about how great this place is and this program is, and, and so I do. So I, I'm. Um, yeah, the consistency part of it, I'm, I'm, that means a lot. That really does. It means a lot because if we're in the best league in the country. And there's a lot of really good coaches and players, but, um, you know, we should be. Kind of an arrogant attitude, but we should be. Red Nico described his game today as needed. I guess, how did you see him navigate? Like, he got into the rotation, then he, he gets hurt, and he had to come back. Like, how do you see him kind of work his way through this whole season? As, as, um, well as anyone could do it. He never beat my door down. He showed up every day, he got the extra lifts. Um, and and what an unbelievable teammate and what an unbelievable statement for every basketball player out there. No matter what level you are. When you're when you're when your time comes and, and you're needed, can you help your team win because you're prepared. I I'm sure he went in today not saying I'm playing eighteen minutes. He had no idea.
that's the ultimate teammate. It's the ultimate mental approach, staying ready. And, and he has handled that as perfectly as any player I've been around. That was awesome today. That was fun to see. Hey Brad, I saw that yesterday you mentioned you were considering some slight tweaks on defense. It seemed today that you were switching as much one through four. Is that, was that Iowa specific, or is that something that you might consider more of? <laughs> um, we're trying to eliminate some <coughs> mistakes. We're trying to be very conscious of matchups. Um, we, we were, it, it was both. It was, to be very honest, um, Perkins is a handful. And, um, you know, the high ball screen, uh, switching their movement, their flares um, are, all, are all issues. But, uh, you know, it's something the more we're trying to just eliminate some mistakes and keep matchups a little more intact. With the way you guys play off the bench, does that I'll just give you more comfort as a coach if you need to make a you know, big change sure. like you did that you can do that yeah. and there won't be a drop off? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, anytime guys play well, I, 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 I think there's tremendous value in that. And, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's, we haven't had that luxury because we haven't truly been healthy. And, and we're, we're trying to fight through um, just getting that back and seeing what that looks like right now. So I'm, like I said, sure, it gives me a lot of confidence knowing that Nico Moretti is going to be ready and that Amadi's growing into what we thought he was going to be. Thank you.